Hello everyone, welcome to Jiro Tech. It's good to see everyone. And if you're watching me for the first time, please do want to subscribe to this YouTube channel. So in this video, we're looking at the Cambridge International AS and E level information technology. Yes, information technology. And we're looking at the course code 9626. The variant is just 12. February March 2024 and this was the paper that was released a few days ago as of the time of this recording we're looking at paper one theory so I'm just going to begin this by writing my name candidate name right HRO tech the center number is um, EN017 my candidate number is 2024. Okay, please take note that the um, duration for these people is 1 hour 45 minutes. The instructions are important. Please go to the instructions. Total mark for these people is 70. I'm so excited. Are you excited? Yeah. Okay. Question 1. Special software can be used for computer modeling. Describe the characteristics that make special software suitable for computer modeling. So I have my test book side by side. And this is the second part of it. So you see this right here in chapter 8 of the test book, spreadsheet. I promise I get to show you where you see this. So this is chapter 8 of the test book, spreadsheet. Okay, so let's describe the characteristics that make the whole idea of spreadsheet is just to uh, manipulate data as much as possible. So let's look at describe the characteristics that make special software suitable for computer modeling. So let's look at what um, the spreadsheet software allows us to do. Okay, so here the first thing I have is spreadsheet software program allows the what if analysis and when we look at the what if analysis we're looking at when we talk about com computer modeling we're talking about more or less like simulations right to carry out such simulations so what if this works what if this doesn't work what is so there's a lot of scenarios that has been applied to it so it allows the what if analysis to be carried out okay so this is very very important okay so um, if you thought about the what is for computer modeling is we're looking at um, um, in, in terms of computer modeling we can look at it in weather forecasting we can look at it in building bridges um, designs of building so what if um, this um, bridge uh, it doesn't hold the total numbers of amount of vehicles as much as possible all this is one thing we need to look at for so let's look at they said describe the characteristics that makes species suitable for um, computer modeling. So let's look at um, those characteristics, okay, suitable characteristics that we can look at for that we can use in the what if analysis um, to be able to carry it out in computer modeling. So let's look at it. Let's look at, I have some examples here. So let's look at examples. What about describing characteristics? Let's look at examples here. So I have um, formulas to be created for calculations. Yes. Formulas are very important. Formulae can be created for calculations. Okay. Now we can also look at another one functions, right? Functions, predefined calculations. Functions can be performed. Can be performed. Functions can be performed, okay, and in formulas, right? Functions can be performed in formulas. Okay, let me formulae. Okay, formula. Mhm. Mm okay, so we can also have charts because of our spreadsheet, we can have charts, right? Those are characteristics charts. Okay, to present 
values for comparison. So in this case, if we're looking at bridges, we're looking at those charts to see, okay, um, if these scenarios have been applied, this will happen. If this is not being applied, this is what will happen. Okay. And uh, we can also look at how many marks is this? Six marks. So that's six point. I've gotten four. Um, we can also look at we can also look at a conditional formatting. Conditional formatting. Okay, which can show. Okay, show data that matches. Okay. That matches. We will talk about matches. Is is it greater than? In this case, we can have is it greater than? Okay, is it greater than or less than? Okay. We could also have um protecting cells. Okay, protect cells from accidental change so what we get to lock the cells okay and don't forget we can also sort I think you can I think I can add more points I've taken one two three four five six so this can be other others other right okay so sort data into A certain rank order so the whole idea is we are looking at those characteristics that we can use the special software which can allow a what-if analysis for this computer modeling which are simulations okay very important so I think I've given enough okay so let's look at um, question 2 a data dictionary is required when creating a relational database a data dictionary okay is required when creating a relational database we all know what relational database is and we we'll look at relational database we're more or less looking at um databases that are linked with key fields okay so when we talk about data dictionary in relational um in relational database, we're more or less looking at components that can store collections of names. So right here, these are what components, okay, components that can store, okay, um, collections of names, okay. Uh, we can have um, maybe definitions, Okay, we can have them as attributes for data elements if you want to add that. Okay, if you want to add that attributes, okay, for data elements. Okay, that and these are being used in the database. Okay, they are being used in the database. So this is very, very important. So the whole idea is that for data dictionary, they store what we call metadata. Hope that makes sense okay that is the data right about what the database i'm trying to explain all this so what we see that these are companies that can store collection of name definition attribute for element we can see that in data in data dictionary there are metadata that can work that what they store what they store these metadata and these metadata are just the data about the database so here we have identify and describe four components that should be included in a data dictionary okay that should be included in what a data what dictionary you will see this in chapter 10 database and file concept i think i'm sure let me check database uh, yeah database and file concept database and file concept and if you're wondering where you see it you should be able to see it here right 
creating a data word dictionary and file concept chapter 10 okay so let's talk about let's identify and then we describe how many marks is this this is um eight marks whoa it's eight marks so let's look at it okay so the first one i want to talk about is data types okay is data types let's talk about data types so that's what i want to talk about data types now for data types right let's let's describe them right identify this guy four components that could need. so we have data types what about that type that uh that they define the kind of data that should be in a particular field right so we have um examples of them we have um um such as okay we can have them as um alphanumeric okay alphanumeric okay we can have them as our text okay boolean etc okay so we can also have um we can also have we, we'll talk about data we'll also talk about the, the feed the feed length as well okay we can also talk about data we'll also talk about the feed length in data types so you should also know that right if you want to talk about this we'll also talk about the feed length the length in a particular field okay so what we'll talk about is specified number is the whole idea of feed length is that it just specifies okay it's just what specifies okay that number those numbers of what characters and what are those characters a b c d so those numbers of character that should be what in that particular field that's just what a feed length is let's look at the second one the second one is validation now for validation right it simply means that certain tests that needs to be applied when a data is entered we know that when it comes to validation we, 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 are, we are just checking to ensure that the data that is entered is what is reasonable and sensible we are not talking about verification here that, that's just we're not about verification we're talking about more or less about validation so here we are just testing we are testing the data that is what entered okay and also we can also ensure by right, what i've said we can also ensure the data entered is what is reasonable okay is reasonable very important okay the next i want to talk about those data dictionaries is primary keys primary keys or foreign keys primary keys or foreign keys i will talk about primary keys usually a primary key is what is used to is used to hold unique data and of course for foreign key they help in the creation of relationship okay so they are what to identify unique what records okay also to link tables that becomes what a relational word database okay the next one we'll look at is relationships okay so let's look at relationships now for relationship we have types okay so we have types of relationships what are those types of relationship we have one to one one to many many to many right so we have types of what relationship types of relationship between what tables right and here we have example here so we have what one to what many okay hope that makes sense one to what many we can ha also have do we have space for others so maybe i'll add here for others i just want to talk about one for others we have description this is not really talked about in the o level but in the a level it is talked about right so description of each field okay so here 
Well, look, we'll talk about description of no, no, in your design view, you know, we have um, the feed name, the data type, and then we have what description. So here you are looking at the explanations, explanation of what of the content. Okay, of the content. Yes, of each field. Okay, very important. Hmm. Hope you're having fun. Okay. Yes, Kurt wishes to ensure that his computer is at its optimum optimum performance. Identify and describe three different types of utility softwares. So we have hardware and software. Okay, so let's describe three different types of utility softwares. He should use so Ken, uh, what Kent is trying to do here um, to ensure that his computer is what at what optimum performance. Now when we talk about the software, you know we have operating system, device drivers, and then we also have utilities. So let's let's talk about those um, three different types of utilities. Of course, we have more than that, but let's look at what um, those utilities that can ensure that his computer is what is in optimum. Performance. The first thing I want to talk about is Dix Dix fragmentation. Yes, so that's the first thing I want to talk about Dix Dix fragmentation. This is specifically for your drive. Okay, so here let's describe it. So examples here could be um, when this is done. The only idea is, is going to work fragment it as much as possible. And I, I will show you, and I will show you what I'm talking about. So here, if I go to control panels, so you can see it real, not just um, um, theoretical. So if you come here under system and security, down here at one of the utilities, defragment and optimize your drive. You can see here that once you optimize it, right, um, files are, can be opened more quickly. Okay. And of course, it can reassemble the files into a more um into what into what them into clusters okay into clusters okay so let's look at it um right here so here you have files are able to open more quickly okay so very very important file management what mark is it? this is six months okay file management is another thing we're looking at so file management okay so under file management what are we looking at okay so here you are looking at probably to organize directories Okay, to organize because that's what we're talking about file management, we're talking about the, the organization of files to organize directories and those and those directories are folders. So take note of that. To organize directories, okay, to organize directories, okay, delete, okay, unnecessary, unnecessary files. Okay, to delete what unnecessary what files. Then the next one is under utility three, we have antiviruses. Okay, antiviruses. So antivirus. Okay, so antiviruses. What do they do here? Let's look at some examples. So examples here can be um, quarantine. Let's talk about quarantine. I want to talk about quarantine. So quarantine. Okay. Any virus it finds. So after searching or for, for viruses and is able to detect is going to quarantine um, any virus it finds. Okay. We can also have preventive viruses from being downloaded. So it can prevent prevents viruses okay from what being 
downloaded okay so I think I've put down some points enough okay I can just do one more so for others okay I always like doing others device um, for others we can also have uh, more or less like data compression too okay so for others we can have uh, on, let's call this utility 4 right utility 4 so under utilities 4 we have data compression okay data compression right data compression tools and what do we have here we can see examples here so example here can be to free up okay to free up what storage space that's one thing we need to look at and one way to free up storage space is by compressing that file we can compress the file or we can actually what reduce what that file okay so you can also you can actually add it here right so by compressing okay by compressing files or reducing whichever one right or reducing what the file size so i feel this would be able to help you a lot here you can also check if you want to you can also check to detect any form of um viruses okay what you call your malware okay of course we'll talk about malware they are also um part of it right question four an airline company uses online processing to allow passengers to book their seats okay describe how online processing is used in this scenario so we'll see this in chapter one of the textbook and here is what data processing and information data processing data processing and information that's where you find it and of course in data processing we have real-time processing we also have what online processing we also have batch processing do you understand we also have what batch processing as much as possible so let's look at this okay let's look at this so describe how online processing so here we're using it to what to allow passengers to what to book their seats so we have to describe how many marks is this in questions like this you have to give the full description when you see questions like this, you have to give the, the full description of how you can be able to use it to book what your seat so the first one i'm going to do i'm going to be very very um specific is um we look at the input okay input so the first thing is the computer deal with what each input okay and what give okay immediate immediate what response okay that's very important so more or less when we tell the computer deal with each process we're looking at more or less when this booking is what is processed in real time so when you book for it you get what a feedback right if that seat you are booking for has been booked or not do you understand if it has been booked or what or not the next one is for this online processing right the online processing here deals right with one transaction at a time unlike the real time right that is more or less it can be able to do a lot but this deals with what one transaction at a time okay so the next thing is once the transaction has what taking place okay the database will be updated okay will be updated of course this is going to be very this is going to be immediate okay the next thing it does is once booked once seat is booked okay 
it is shown as what booked so let me give you a real, a real life scenario were you booking for your flights okay so how are we using the online processing to actually what accomplish that so we we'll deal with the input you get responses one transaction is being done and um one transaction is done at the time and one transaction has taken place one transaction has taken place the database is updated and once it is booked what happens it is shown as what as booked okay and of course so once the transaction has what taken place okay the computer sends what a message this message can come in the form of a ticket let's call it a ticket sends what a ticket to what the user to inform the seats has what been booked so this is more or less a practical explanation for those who travel a lot probably this is not going to be an issue for you the b part is describe two benefits for passengers of using online processing when booking seats the first benefit i'm going to look at is number one um guaranteed that they will be on the flight okay is guaranteed because it's one booking at a time so it's guaranteed it there's no it this is not this is not it prevents any form of double booking so it's one at a time so it's going to guarantee that they will be on the what flight okay another benefit that we can look at here another benefit we can look at here is that the customers can know immediately mm -hmm, if they have what successfully booked a seat so here they get what we call immediate confirmation right they get what immediate what confirmation that's what happened right they get immediate what confirmation right of course here again if you want to look at other benefits here if you want to look at other benefits so for others right you can see that flight okay won't be what overbooked so another benefit here when using the online place to book the seat is right the seat if you book it the seat can be held as yours for a period of time right so you can have time to probably think it over go to it am i okay with the fees am i going to pay for the fees as much as possible whether i'm going to go ahead to make the payment or not and then if you're not able to do that it becomes available okay so we can probably add it here right seats is what held as yours for what a period of what time okay so yes you can period of time you can have time to think it over and to know if you're going to make payment or not hope that um, makes sense question five an apartment has a controlled central heating system this service include a microprocessor explain how the temperature in the apartment is controlled by the system okay so let's explain this real quick okay so this is going to be seen in chapter three monitoring and controls the control controls monitoring and control right? all right so let's talk about it so here we have a control central what heating system and we have what we call a microprocessor so i to explain how the temperature in the apartment is controlled by the system the first thing you need to understand i'm going to put it this way is we have a sensor 
right? So we have a sensor, and the, the sensor which will measure the physical environment needs to be converted by a hardware known as ADC. Okay, now it's going to convert it to the microprocessor. And from there, it's going to what? Convert it to what? On that device known as what? A DAC. And then before it goes to the actuator. So when you understand this description, when you have an idea of this diagram, it's going to help you a lot. Okay? It's going to help you a lot. Even when we are looking at a glass house. Yes. Now, I can show you here so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, right here, good. So use of the control technology was system. So here you can see that we have what we call an actuator. So more or less, the actuator is just to why the sensor is input. The actuator provides what the output. So the, what the actuator does is just to control. And we're going to look at it a lot here. What is what being done? So this is more or less for a glass house. How it the whole process goes on and on and on as much as possible so the glass house gives us what a good system even control of pedestrian roads as much as possible do we have it here um not traffic lights um smart homes a good example is a smart homes or free technology for smart homes so let's look at it so smart homes is what we are going to look at so now let's look at it so how is the temperature in the apartment being controlled by the system, right? which includes this microprocessor? So how many marks is this? This is six marks. Okay, let's see how we, how we do this. So the first step, okay, the required, the temperature, or let's call it the required. That's the first thing. So the required temperature, the required temperature is what is set is set by what by the user that's the first thing okay so the required temperature is set by what the user and of course this required temperature is then inserted the required temperature okay is input using what a remote control right we yeah remote control a remote control okay now what happens we now have what a sensor so the sensor here is used to what is used to read it can read it can monitor it can gather whichever we want to use it's used to what read the current temperature the current temperature then the next one is this data so when the sensor is, we read the current temperature, we gather, we monitor, right? What happens is that the data is then collected. It's going to read, is then going to collect what? By what? The sensor. So the data is collected. The data collected. After reading, data collected by the sensor. Guess what? It's analog. Right? It's analog. Okay, now the data, the data is what converted, converted to what? To digital. Using what hardware? Using what? The analog to digital converter. Okay, then what happens when it has not been converted? The microprocessor, microprocessor will now compare the data. Okay, or in this case, that data that data becomes what the temperature. Because I'm working with temperature here, the temperature to what they required. Okay value remember that was set by what the user 
right? That was set by the user. So what happens? This one I use the if. So if temperature, if temperature is what is the same, nothing happens. Okay, nothing happens. Okay, but if the data is what different than the what required value. Okay, what happens? The microprocessor, we're not done with this yet. Follow me on this. The microprocessor would send, so it sends what? A signal. Mm -hmm. Okay. It sends a signal to what? To the actuator. So you, you see what I'm talking about? To the actuator. So why the sensor provides input? What does the actuator do? It provides what? Output. As simple as that. Okay. So now, this is where we can now split this into two. So how, how is it different? How is it different? Okay. I'll show you this. So if lower than the what preset value. So if lower, comma, the microprocessor okay so it sends a signal to what to the actuator so if lower the microprocessor right to the actuator to the actuator because the actuator is the one that's going to do the work right switches the heater on okay if higher okay the actuator we do what switches what switches the heater what off and take note okay the process is what is constantly repeated is what is repeated so hope that makes sense okay question six some computer system have a command line interface have what a command line what interface evaluate the use of what the command line what interface when we talk about evaluate please take note we are judging both the positive and what negative you really have to take note because the command words are very very important right so at a level it is it is very expedient that when they tell you to evaluate the use of the CLI or the use of any of the interfaces, you are not just looking at, okay, let me just talk about the, the, the benefit. Let me just talk about, you, you're talking about literally both what, um, the positive, and then you're talking about what, the negative. Hope that makes sense. And I will show you for free, okay, where you can actually find that in the textbook, literally right now. So you're going to see it here under what, user interfaces, right? Of course, we have four of them. We have the CLI. We have the GUI, we have the dialogue, and we have the gesture. It has not changed. Okay, four of them. And you see it in chapter two, hardware and software. Of course, for O level is chapter one, right? But this is A level right here. So you see it in chapter two. Okay, so yes, you're going to see it in chapter two. Chapter two. And you see it in hardware and what? Software. okay hardware and software right here okay I think putting them together as well so let's evaluate the use of them so the first one i want to evaluate here let's talk about what they are usually right Let, let's start with what is even a cli what is the command line 
interface. What is the command line interface? So let's look at it. So a CLI, right? CLI, of course, command line interface. If you don't remember anything, just remember what CLI is, right? Is where the user interacts. Okay, by what typing commands, and if you're wondering what this command is, it's just text, so you have to explain to examiner it's text. Okay, so it's text. So let's talk about let's evaluate it. Okay, let's have evaluate it. Is so we can look at in the use of CLI, right? So we can look at it that number one is more flexible why right? because you are directly interacting with the computer unlike gui it's limited you, you only get to work with the icons that you have okay so this is very very important okay another one is let's talk about um another one right so instructions uh, although this is more or less like um, a drawback, right? So the instructions have to be learned. Okay, it's not like the GUI. So you have to, any instruction you are going to send to the computer have to be what? Have to be learned. So instructions have to be what? Learned. Okay. So it does not allow, it does not allow what we call multitasking. Unlike the graphical, that you could do so many things at the same time. But for CLI, it does not allow what multiple word taxing. So take note of that. Does not allow what multiple. Okay. Okay, we'll call it Windows. And of course, we'll talk about multiple Windows. We're just talking about multi-taxing. So take note. Multitaxing. Now, another one I want to look at is six marks, right? So here is this the CLI may be processed more for this is more processed more quickly once it's typed in. So you can see that it's flexible, right? And then again for the CLI. So CLI commands may be processed more quickly so of course once you type it in whether it's correct whether it's not you get you get a feedback immediately okay another one is the cli commands are complicated okay the cli commands are complicated so you need to take note right they are complicated complicated in the sense that you need to memorize them so it simply means that if you don't memorize them co correctly, you're not going to get the correct word result. Okay. And of course it requires specific training. It simply means that you need to learn the Dix operating system. Okay. So it requires what? It requires what? Training. Specific training. Okay. Specific what? Training. Very, very important. Okay. How many is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, can I add um, one more? Um, okay, let's see. Order. Okay, let me add one more. So this is for others. If I can remember one more to add, um, let's look at it. Um, let me add one more to it. Okay, so again, another good thing about the CLI over the GUI that for GUI, it makes up more memory. Okay, it makes up more memory. Okay, but for CLI, CLI uses less, less what memory. Okay, it uses less memory than all the user interface. Okay, so that's important. Question seven The IT manager, Rock ICT, can purchase either off the chef software or custom meeting software. I have a video on this when I talked about, I've talked about the chapter, um, 
um, I've talked about the hardwares and softwares and I also I've talked about that for chapter 2 so there's a video on it right here on my channel so go have fun with it and I will, I will be able to talk about the softwares right so we have up the chairs softwares and custom written word software so we'll talk about off the chair software we'll talk about software that has been made already right and organizations cannot actually make use of them but we'll talk about the custom written software those are software that you have to design for fresh to suit the needs of the organization i hope that makes sense and we're going to see this in so we'll see this in chapter two hardware and software okay so let's describe three advantages of Rook IT purchasing what off the shelf software again, these are something that's already been designed, right? So, organizations are not going to make use of it in order to what suit and um, carry out their activities, okay? So, just like I said, the first thing, the first advantage here is that the software is already available, okay? So, the software is more what readily what available, the software is what more readily what available okay now another one you can actually choose so the hook ict can choose okay between different what manufacturers to see which one is cheaper which one is effective towards carrying out their work so you can choose between different what manufacturers of what software okay Another thing that is very important with off the shell software is the fact that the software is fully tested. You know, custom made, the, there are various phases. You develop to organization, there are some errors, you go back to, to uh, modify, more or less like this, um, the testing phases, right? Where you get to modify the software, test them, modify, and go back again. But for off the shell software, it has been fully tested okay so that is a very good advantage so the software is okay more likely let's put the word more likely to have what to have been fully tested so i've talked about three so i can just put one more please one more right there is now take note of this right the updates to the software can be more frequent. Why? There are multiple people that is using it. Okay? Because there are multiple customers that is making use of it. The updates, well, updates are more or less like patches, right? So the updates to the software, okay, can be more frequent. Okay? So the B part, describe three advantages of Rook IT of purchasing what custom written software so what are those um what are those advantage one advantage i want to talk about is that what they can get direct support from the developer the person that made the software to tailor to the needs of what that organization they get direct access to developers we that make use of let's say for example you make use of um um the microsoft office you don't have direct access to developers we have a just customer office um yeah, you're, you're having access to what to what we call support okay support but here you're having what direct support from what the developer so here you can get you can get okay direct support okay from the developer okay another thing is it only includes that's the difference with custom written software. You are only talk, you are only um, developing software that includes the features you want. Offshore, it can, there are so many features that you're not making use of, but you need it because it has some features that you want. But in the custom written software, you are only developing that software with the features that you want alone, only and only, like literally only and only, right? So that is very very important. So only includes the required what features. For what? For Rook. We have to please relate to the question. Very important. For Rook what? ICT, which is the organization. Okay? And again, one thing you don't have control over is the, in, in the off the show, you don't have control over the software. But in the custom written software, you have more control of the writing of what? The software. 
Okay, so Rook ICT, which is the organization we have to relate it to him, to the organization, has what more control, okay, of the writing, how you want the interface to be like, how you want the um login page, the dashboard, um, you know, um, other links, other database, database links to it, other modules that will be attached to it. You have control of the writing, okay, writing of what the software okay so we can have others remember since it's custom they own the software and they can sell it they can legally sell it to what to others so they have no they have not breached any what copyright they have not breached any copyright legislation because they have what the intellectual property of it makes sense they own it so which is also a very good one a good one one to look at so the hook ict okay will own the software okay and could legally okay sell it to others if they choose okay if they choose okay they can also specify exactly what they want right they can also specify i want this kind of software to do this for me so the book ict can specify okay exactly what they want okay to fulfill the exact purpose that the software was created for so this is very very important all right question eight so we have a secretary of a company has been asked to transfer all the staff's record from the current paper-based system to a computer database. Okay, good. The secretary will use validation and verification to check the data, to check the data. Explain why both validation and verification are needed in this scenario. There are some things validation can do, and there are things that verification can do. Remember, verification is checking that the data entered is correct, is, is what is transferred accurately from one medium to another medium. Validation is is checking to ensure that the data entered is what is reasonable and sensible do you understand okay so when they say explain why both of them are needed in order for the staff um uh, for the secretary to be able to transfer um the staff record from the paper base to computer database which is verification and to ensure that the record that she's transferring into is going into the right fields that the validation comes in Hope we are learning. Hope we are learning. This A level, guys. So, hope we are learning. So, we'll see this in chapter one data processing and information. And you see it under what? Checking the accuracy of data. Now, if we remember, when we are looking at this right here, under the quality of information, remember we talked about that. Checking the accuracy of data such as verification and validation is easy to see how the errors are. So here under um, checking the accuracy of data, we have this is you see it in 1.4, right? 1.4, where you talk about what the, ver the verification and what validation. See somewhere here. Look at it right here, right? Check it to so use what the verification and what vi val what validation. So just to show you that when we talk about um verification the data that we enter has been entered accurately and we'll talk about what um validation it simply means that the data that we entered has to be what has to be done what um the data entered has to be what visible let me show what i'm talking about here so here you see that watch this version ensures that the data value enter are what reasonable but what does verification do what does verification what does it do verification tries to ensure that the actual process of data entry is what accurate so verification talks about the accuracy of the data why verification talks about what how reasonable and sensible that data what is so it is very important that that original data right in this case is for what the secretary do you understand so we're looking at it for the secretary that with that data that is being copied from the paper base to what to what the database so this is very very what important that is why when they say the secretary of a company has been asked to transfer all the staff's record from the coin uh, paper base to the computer base 
it is important because while we are looking at the accuracy of it, we're also looking about the sense, the how sensible that data can what can be. Do you understand? So for us to be able to explain, for us to be able to explain why both of them are important is we can look at it here, right here. Let me get my pen. So we look at it that the first part is we have to look at why both of them are needed in this scenario. Because one on its own cannot be able to do it and the other cannot be what be able to do it. So you can see that number one, this method on their own will not be able to what to actually what accurately what correct the data. So you need to understand that. Okay, so we can see that number one, these methods. Which, what about this method? We're talking about um, the validations and verifications, right? On their own, do not ensure that the data entered, okay, is correct. Now, let's look at why both of them are needed. So, we can see that verification is checking that the data has been entered what correctly that the data entered into the computer has been copied correctly okay validation is checking that the data entered is what reasonable Okay, that is follows the set of rules. If you want to add that, follows a set of rules. Another one is verification. Let's let's explain this. Verification helps to stop users from what making what mistakes. When what entering data note right it cannot check that the data was what originally what correct are we learning but validation is needed because watch this the original data might be what invalid so we can now see that both are needed to make sure that the data is both what correctly copied and what copied and what valid Okay, we can look at if you want to also put example of validations like um, um, rain check, land check. You can go ahead. If you want to put examples of um, verification technique like um, visual check, double data entry, you can also go go also to that. You can also put that in your point, and the examiner is also going to what to mark it. Do you understand? All right. Question nine. Encryption can be used to protect data in an email. Encryption can be used to protect data in an email. Explain, evaluate the use of encryption for this purpose. So this is chapter one. Right? I will see this in what? Encryption right here. Method of, method of encryption. So we have the method of encryption here. So you have, um, so this is the, the whole idea of encryption here. When we have our plain text and we have the encryption key, it becomes a cipher text. We have a description key and then we have it as what? A plain text. Please note that the encryption key is a public key. The encryption key is what? A private key. So we have symmetric and what? Isometrics. So you need to what? Know that. And of course, symmetric talks about the secret key involved the sending computer of the user. 
having the same key to encrypt. Symmetric is different. Asymmetric is different. You have a public key and a private key. Symmetric, both of them have the same key, right? And they are secret encryption. Do you understand? Okay. So here, this is what data processing and information. Data processing and what? Information. Data processing and what? Information. So let's evaluate the use of this purpose. How many marks is it? Seven marks. Okay. So let's look at... um. We can look at the description, right? Like I said, we can look at the description. So let's let's look at description the description here. So we can see what we are talking about. So here we're going to write this. So what happens here is that what happens here is that the way it works, computer sends message using what an encryption key to encode the data. So here you can see that number one, an information. which is what a plain text is encrypted. Watch this. Use what an encryption key, right, to decode it. So it's what is encrypted, is encrypted using an encryption algorithm. With what? An encryption key. Okay, so that is description there. That encryption key, uh, making it unreadable, until decrypted with what a decryption key hope that makes sense now the next one okay is it reduces let's evaluate it it reduces what we have learned it reduces what the motivation of interception because anybody that intercepts it it doesn't make sense it's unreadable. It's meaningless to the person that intercepts it. So it reduces the motivation of what? The, the motivation for what? For interception. Okay? And you might ask why. I will tell you, I will tell you for free. And the reason why is because the data is protected. Another one, it also allows, because of this, it allows what? Confidential. Right? Information. Very sensitive information. To be transferred. Okay? In what emails? Remember, we're looking at emails. So even if it is sent using an email, right, this is what very, even anybody that intercepts it will not be able to understand what it means. Okay? Another one is it allows, it enables what? It enables businesses to comply with what? Data Protection Act. I want to call it regulations. Okay. So this is what we're evaluating. We are looking at here what it is. Here we're looking at the drawbacks. Sorry, brother, benefit. What am I doing? This is benefit. Let's look at drawbacks. We looked at what it is, description, benefit, and then let's look at drawbacks. So what are the drawbacks here? Now, the drawbacks is hackers can still intercept it. Even they don't watch this, hackers can still in intercept it. So we have to put it there. Hackers can still inter what? intercept what? Intercept the emails. Okay. Another drawback is it takes longer to be able to encrypt the data. Okay? It takes longer. It takes longer 
to what to encrypt to encrypt the data it also takes longer it takes longer to decrypt the data so why we why it takes longer to encrypt the data it also takes longer to what to decrypt what the data okay and please it is very important if the we know we talked about symmetric and asymmetric encryption if the same key is repeatedly used there is a security issue right so if the same key if the same key is used repeatedly there is what a security issue so let's take note of that a security what issue i think at this point i think i've said enough right so remember the encryption key must be private right and must be transferred between sender and what receiver that's all that so anyone that has access to it what happens so i think i've said enough this is one two three one two three four i think i've said enough okay so you can add more in the comment section right if you have others to share i think i'm just going to open of course this is very important when we talk about emails digital certificate is very important because we're talking about the we're talking about the private keys we're talking about um the the date issued we're talking about the expiring date all these things are very very important okay it's very very important all right chapter 10 sound editing softwares can be used to alter the sampling rate in audios i'm not going to go too much to it this is something you're going to see in i think chapter 11 yeah you see it right here chapter 11 right sound and what video what editing so you're going to see this here in chapter 11 chapter 11 sound and what video what editing okay so explain what is meant by the term sampling rate okay so when we talk about sampling rate we're just talking about numbers of samples okay so this is usually um uh, within like one second um it can be a given period of time okay so it can be any time unit literally that's what it is so we'll talk about the term sampling rate the first thing is it is what the number of what samples okay the number of what samples can i go deeper now what about the number of samples per seconds they are taking right they are taking of what a waveform you know your wave right I, i'm not a physics teacher but i would try to show you what we talk about wave right so something like this a wave right so it creates what we call a discrete word um digital signal right it creates what we call what a discrete word digital word signal so we can we can say that in audio this is more or less in audio right um if you if you music producer you probably know what i'm talking about right so the higher the sample rate the more snapshot you can capture of what the audio word signal okay so the, sam the sample rate please take note for sample rates right they are measured in what kilo hands okay that is more or less i say k h k is smaller letter is lowercase h is uppercase and then you have what z as what lowercase so when we talk about the the whole idea why we know it as kilo hands it just determines the range of frequency that is captured in a digital audio that frequency and you know that it goes in a waveform like we said it goes the waveform and that waveform create what we call a digital signal i do video editing a lot right so when you're editing videos right as much as possible you're going to see that wave right for every video video captures audio right and you can be able to separate it you can be able to separate the videos from the audio right we can split it we can split the sample so that we can be able to modify the videos and the, the audio sound as much as possible to get what we want so we we'll talk about the sampling uh, the sampling rate we're talking about numbers of samples that we can have it can be within one second um it can also be within what 
the numbers of what minutes as much as what um numbers of period of time as much as possible okay so this is very very important so it is what the numbers of what samples okay very important and um examples of this numbers of samples examples can be within a uh, usually within one second okay it can also be within a given number a given period of time a given period of time okay very important explain how the sampling rate can affect the audio files let's explain how the sampling rate can affect what the audio files okay so here we can see that number one you know what i what i what, what i said earlier on that the higher what the higher what the sampling rate i said that the higher the sample rate the more snapshot you can capture of, of what the audio what signal so let's let's rephrase that a bit okay so we can see that a higher sampling rate a higher sampling rate okay sounds better because remember a higher sampling rate has more accuracy which is what you present to what the audio sound when we increase the frequency you can see that uh we can actually reduce we can actually increase the frequency and when you increase the, the frequency the waveform also what goes up right we sense what that discrete what digital signal do you understand so when we have a, high, a higher sampling rate it sounds better than what a lower rate okay and usually the lower rates are usually what uh the the lower the the the, sam the 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 sample rate obviously that simply means the smaller the file size as a producer you know when you're producing your sounds in wave right if you're producers and you're also a student so you know what i'm talking about right? so when you're when you're producing your sound in wave you can you see that the file size that you're going to have will be more than the one you have when you're exporting the mp3 literally we are importing what in mp3 okay so you need to take note of that so here you can see that the lower the sample rate the smaller the file size okay because why here because there is what less data stored okay how can you affect if you want to add for others okay it can affect the audio files or the audio sounds right it captures it captures sounds at discrete points okay so not the whole sound okay so hope that makes sense question 11 explain what is meant by the term open source file format okay open source file format when we talk about open source file, file format they are used for number one storing digital data okay it can be pop can be published publicly right so here you can see this you can also see this in chapter eight if you read to chapter 8 spreadsheet chapter 11 for, for do, we'll talk about open source from open source file format we're talking about what are we talking about we're talking about csv we're talking about text txt okay i was talking about um jpg png so all these words i will call them what open source file format they can be opened by what various what softwares do you understand they can be opened by what various what softwares okay even okay txt i've talked about rtf etc etc right so here we have it it is a format let's start with this it is a format it is a format okay for storing data okay of course we'll talk about data we're talking about digital okay we're talking about digital okay, these three marks okay another one is 
it can be what used and implemented by what anyone okay used and implemented by anyone it's open source by anyone okay they can also they, also, they can also be called what a free file format if they're not covered by any copyright or uh, or by any form of copyright right so you should also know that okay okay they can be used at no monitoring cost right they can be used they can be used at no what monetary cost so you don't have to get any special software to be able to open them they can be open what for what by any software and they can be used for any desired purpose okay you need to know that you can also look at the examples that we looked at so examples okay examples so you have um, csv okay you have um txt you have jpeg okay as much as possible so hope that makes sense so they can also be used for both proprietary and what open source software so yeah question 12 a digital divide exists between the more technological aware and the less technologically aware nations analyze this type of digital divide you're going to see this in chapter 6 digital divide and something to help you with let's look at the command word here for analyze and that would help us a bit now they said examine in details to show meaning identify elements and the relationship between them so let's do this so when analyzing this we first of all look at what this are divide it is a gap right so we can see that the first one is the gap now what is happening they said this exists between more technically aware and less technically what aware nation. So the gap is caused by what different, different what levels of what knowledge. Okay, about what? Because between more technically aware and less technically aware what? So it's just all about levels of knowledge about what, what technology what, what technology is available, what technology is what available okay and what benefits can it give to the nation that's another thing okay and then we can see here that a person who is aware of what's available can achieve what the technology is used for so when we are analyzing we see that we're analyzing, we're analyzing the fact that the people who are aware of this technology can now see the benefits of what it can what do so you can see that a nation who is aware of what is available okay what is available okay we use the technology what is available who is aware of what can be achieved using this technology we what we use it we use the technology all right the next one increase increase digital awareness okay leads to increase okay leads to increase more investment more infrastructures in it i can see our developed nations they are investing so much in it Another one. How we analyze quite explain in details. This divide 
may be reduced by education. Hope we see that now. By education. Okay? Another one. It can exist. This divide may exist. Okay? Within any what age group. Again, a nation. When we talked about this, let's talk about this as well. A nation who is not aware of what can be achieved using this technology will what? Not what use the technology, okay? So that's very important. How many points is this? This is one, two, three, four, five, six, six, six points. So I think that is fine. So this is where we would end this video. We've talked about um, G two divide chapter six. We've talked about open source. We've talked about um, chapter eleven. Sound like audio editing. We've talked about data processing, talking about encryption, symmetric and asymmetric. Um, we've talked about validation and verification, which is very, very important here because this is obviously this is chapter one. Okay, if you're wondering, chapter one data processing and information, data processing and information. And then this is also we looked at purchasing. And of course, this is chapter two, hardware and software. We took that both the off chair softwares and custom witching softwares. And we went on and on talking about the command line, which is chapter two. Is chapter two there, there. Yes, chapter two. Okay. We went on and on talking about um, monitoring and control, talking about the microprocessor. And I gave you a descriptive on how that can be done. We also talked about um, online processing, which is chapter one. Um, online processing real time, but we're specific on the online processing. We also looked at um, how our computers can be an optimum using different types of utility software. We also looked at chapter 10, database and file concept. Okay, what we talked about using dictionary to be able to for components that include a dictionary when we are creating what a relational word database. And here we talked about what um, using what. The spreadsheet was stable for what computer model. So yes, uh, more we'll about the what if analysis, you will see this in modeling, which is chapter nine, right? Let me check chapter nine, right? Yes, I think it's chapter nine. Um, give me a minute to check. I'm sorry. Go back. Yes, uh, chapter nine. Yeah, chapter nine modeling. Chapter nine modeling. Okay, so this is very very important. Thank you very much and please do well to subscribe to this YouTube channel for more amazing content. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.